Gathering. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise and acknowledge that Jesus is King. He's Lord. He is in this place and we are here for him tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you come to worship the Lord, to give unto him all that he deserves tonight and receive from him because I know God has great things in store tonight. But first, let's fix our attention and our focus upon the one that truly matters, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let's worship him for who he is tonight. Worship you, oh God. Oh, we worship you. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me, and all my days. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Let's sing that again I love you, Lord For oh, your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice, Lord. Your voice, for you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived. In the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything, yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. All my life, it's all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able and I will sing of 
the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say. can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace and help me find a way bring me back to you Take your place 
hands and sing, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. And you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yes, you do, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. So I give you my worship. Oh, Jesus. No one like you, Lord. Oh, there's no one like you, Lord. No one like you. And you're all. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. And I know you are near. You're all You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. And I know you are Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just to be in your presence, Lord. All we want is to be in your presence. Just to be with you, Jesus. Just to worship you. Just to give you all the glory and all the honor, all the praise, all the adoration, Jesus, that you deserve. 
Lord, as we lift our hearts up to you tonight, declaring you are Lord, declaring your kingship over our lives, that you are the risen Savior, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, our Provider, the one who rules and reigns high above all any other thing. Jesus, we are so grateful, so grateful, Lord, and so thankful for the privilege of being in your presence, for the privilege of being in your house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We lay our lives before you tonight, Jesus. We surrender all to you. Have your way in us. Work in us, among us, through us. Whatever needs to be changed, Lord, we're here to be changed. Just that moment in your presence. Just that one word from heaven changes everything. We love you, Jesus, and we, once again, we are so thankful to be in, invited into your house tonight. May you be exalted above all else. May you be high and lifted up, Jesus, as we honor you and glorify your mighty name. We thank you once again. We thank you once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, go ahead and make your way back to your, your seats tonight. Hallelujah. It's good to be in our Father's house. Welcome to one of the greatest churches on the planet. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And it's not because we're here. It's because Jesus is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'd like to also welcome you who are streaming with us. Hey, get your Bible out, follow along, turn to the scriptures with us, watch the word of God come, become life in your life. And if you haven't received Jesus into your life, it's no, no better time to ask him than right now. All you have to say is, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for what I've done. I receive you now in Jesus' name. And it's that simple. And your life can be turned around, and you'll never be the same again. Amen. So follow along with us. Watch the Word of God change your life. And uh, hey, we're glad to have you with us. Praise God. Well, we're going to transition into our offering time. So ushers, if you would uh, help serve the people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, out of the contemporary English version, if you give to others, you will be given a full amount in return. It will be packed down shaken together and spilling over into your lap. The way you treat others is the way you will be treated. You know when we give, we're giving to others because these doors remain open. This house gets built up. It gets taken care of. Our man of God gets provided for. There's a, there's a man of God in our house, in our midst, a leader, a shepherd, that when people come through these doors, the word of God gets to touch their lives, just as it did when we walked in here. So let's never forget that it's, it's not just taking care of a building. It's not just taking care of our man of God, but it's all tied to people. And the way that we treat others is the way we're going to be treated. I don't know about you, but I kind of like you reap what you sow. Now, I've done some things back in the past that I don't want to reap, you know, but that's, that's, that's under the bridge. That's all over with. I've, I've got a new outlook on that now. Amen. So praise God. I can sow and I can reap the goodness of God. 
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you give to others, you will be given a full amount in return. It will be packed down and shaken together, spilling over into your lap. And the way you treat others is the way you will be treated. That's a good, that's a good word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're ready to give, go ahead and stand. We'll say our profession tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, here we go. Lord, I come to worship you today and submit myself under the authority of your word. Thank you for your salvation, help, deliverance, prosperity, and protection in my life. Because of your power, I can walk free from my past, free from sin, free from the world system, and blessed in everything I put my hand to do. I honor you and worship you with my giving. I have been a good steward, and I bring your tithe back to you. I bring you my offering as a sacrifice of worship. Because of this, there will always be food in this house. You will rebuke the devourer for my sake, and the windows of heaven will be open in my life. I give gifts out of love for your kingdom. May your house and your people be blessed because I'm here. I sow seed today. I believe for breakthrough harvest in every area of my life. I believe your word is true. It doesn't matter what happens on earth today. Heaven's supply will always be more than enough. I give with a joyful heart because I know the plans you have for me are good. And I receive it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just stretch out our hands and ignite our faith, to, faith together tonight. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to bring your holy tithe in, to bring offerings, to bring gifts in, to sow seed tonight. And Father, we just declare your multiplication system upon this offering tonight to further the, your kingdom and to go forth and cast that net even farther, touching people's lives everywhere, Father, that we have that realm of influence. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that increase comes to your people, those who are tithers and givers, Father. Increases coming into their lives here, Father. I thank you that increases coming to your house, Father God, that finances are flowing in to further, further your house, Father, and equip your house even more than it has been. I thank you, Lord, as people come in, Father, there's an increase of people that will put their hands to the plow, not looking back, but Lord God, to, to, to be the servant of the Most High God. And we thank you, Lord, for these people coming in to join us, to serve you all the days of our life. We call this offering blessed, and we thank you for the opportunity for it tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Go ahead and greet somebody tonight.
going to be an awesome time in the presence of the Lord tonight, amen. All right, you all can be seated. I have the honor of coming to you with the word tonight. Um, I talked to God a bit about this, and I was like, Lord, I, I usually only preach once, one time a year, and, uh, <laughs> but so here I am again. So what do you want me to say? <laughs> and the Lord, just like he always is, he's faithful, and um, he gave me what he, w- he wanted me to say tonight. So uh, before we get started, let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this time in your house. We thank you, Jesus. What a privilege. What an honor it is to serve you, Jesus. What an honor it is to be your children, Father. I thank you, Father, that we never take it for granted. We never take you for granted. We never take your presence for granted, your house for granted, your people for granted, Lord, your word for granted. But I just thank you, Father, that we're all built up tonight, that you use me, Lord, in this way, Jesus, to build up your church, your body, that you give me the words to speak, and that it's a word in due season. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. 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 Well, the thing I'm going to be talking about tonight, if you want a title, it's called Relationship Over Assignment, Coming Back to Your First Love. So it's a little big. So Relationship Over Assignment, Coming Back to Your First Love. Um, And we're going to start out in Revelation chapter 2, so we're working our way all the way back to the back of the book. Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 1. Amen. Coming back to our first love. All right, starting in verse 1, it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake. And have not become weary. Those are all really good things, aren't they? But then in verse 4 it says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So here's here's Jesus speaking. It's red letters, right? And he's saying, you guys are awesome. You, you, You do the work. You haven't grown weary. You've put your hand to the plow. You're doing ministry. You're doing the work. You're laboring in ministry, in, in, in everything that I've called you to do, right? But then he says, but I have this against you. You've lost your first love. And who's our first love? Jesus, Jesus is our first love, right? Amen. See, we can get so caught up in the assignment that we begin to forget about the one who anointed us for the assignment in the first place, Jesus. You know, I've been in ministry for a long time now. Um, I've been on the worship team for 20 years. I've been coming to this church for almost 30 years. Uh, So it's been a long time. Um, And through the years, you know, I started crawling, right? (laughs) I don't know if any of you have heard the saying, you know, crawl as long as you can. So once you start crawling, crawl as long as you can. And then, because then you're going to start walking. And once you start walking, walk as long as you can. And then you're going to start running. And once you start running, you're never going to stop running until the day you take your last breath. And I know that when I was young, you know, gosh, we would come into this church building. We would get here kind of late some days. And worship had already been started. And I would walk through those doors. And I remembered feeling the presence of God 
right when I walked through those doors, when I was like seven, eight years old. And I remember feeling the difference. And I would come into this building and the presence of the Lord would be here, right? And he's still here today, amen? But what I want us to remember tonight is that don't ever lose that feeling of when you first felt the presence of God. Don't ever lose that fire when you first felt that taste of freedom, amen? Because if we're not careful, we can get so caught up in the assignment. We can get so caught up in what we need to get done and what we need to do and all the things that need to be done, amen, to make a church function. But we can get so caught up in that that we can forget about the person that gave us the assignment in the first place and we can lose our first love. You see, I'm going to have my husband come up here because he's my husband and I love him. (laughs) He's going to help me with this. You see, when we first invite Jesus into our hearts, it's a new thing, right? It's brand new. We got a fire inside of our hearts. We're like, yes, this is going to be awesome. My husband's going to be God today. He's going to be Jesus. And I'm just going to be me. (laughs) And we can get so excited and pumped. You know, we want to dive into it. We can take a walk. We want to dive into our word, right? We want, to, we want to dive into ministry. We want to dive into everything that the Lord has for us. We're so excited. We're crawling at the moment because we just accepted Jesus, but we have people around us that are helping us, and we're just pumped to be in the house of God, right, to even come through the doors. It's what an exciting day. And then we get our first assignment in ministry. Whoa. Somebody asked me, to work in the nursery? Whoa! The Lord thought that I was good enough to work with the children? That's amazing! And then we just, we have this excitement about us, and we pray before we teach those children, and we get the lesson, and we we pray over it when we ask the Lord, Father, I don't want to do this without you. I can't do it without you, so give me the words to speak. Give me, give me the things to say to bless your children, and then we start to walk in ministry, right? And we begin to be faithful with little, And the Bible says when we're faithful with little, the Lord will begin to give us more and more and more. So our assignments get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if we're not careful when our assignments start to grow and all the responsibilities start to get more and more, instead of being really close to God, we can start just holding his hand at first, right? Lord, I'm going to your house again. It's probably my hundredth time being there. I love you still, but I'm starting to get a little close. I'm starting to get a little familiar with your presence, Uh with your people. Uh You know, I used to really love working with the kids, but now they're starting to kind of annoy me once in a while. (laughs) So I did get my lesson, but I forgot about it. So I just put it together really fast last night. Sorry, he told me not to pass the plant. I passed the plant. And so we start to lose that excitement because we start to leave our relationship with the Lord behind, right? And then we start to rely on our experience instead of the anointing that Jesus has placed on our lives to do the work. Because one day I might, be, I might just decide, you know, now I'm running, Lord. I'm running. I, I have experience I was, I was asked to do this. I've been doing it for a lot of years. I'm running. I don't, I don't need to do what I used to do because I have all of this experience. I have all this knowledge. I have all this word in me already. Why would, why would I need to spend time with Jesus before I come up here to lead worship? Because yeah. I know these songs. I've led them over and over and over again. Why would I need to get on my face before my Savior and make sure my relationship was the most important thing? We've been together for so long. Yeah. I've forgotten the fire that I felt when I first met my God, right? We can get into that moment where, whoa, I I didn't realize how far I've fallen. I didn't realize how far I've walked without him. I didn't realize. But the good news is, is that we can repent. 
we can look at our lives and we can say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm coming back to my first love because I need him every hour. I need him to do the work that even if I've been doing it year after year, time after time, I need him. I need him to help me. I need him to be with me. I need the anointing. I can't rely on yesterday's manner. I need it new and fresh every day. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Amen. So let's come back to our first love. We can't walk with God unless we talk with God. I heard Dr. Barkley say that at the last conference. We can't walk with God unless we talk with God. And it seems like a little thing, but it's a huge, important thing. Our day-to-day -day relationship. Our pastor has been talking about drawing from the well and not the cistern that has the hole in it every Wednesday, right? Zach just preached about a couple Wednesdays ago not being distracted because it's about the relationship. It's coming back to the heart of the matter, and the heart is Jesus. And we must remember our relationship with Jesus. So let's go to Luke 10, verse 38. Luke 10, 38. Let me get there. Praise God. And this is Martha and Mary. I know Zach uh, touched on this scripture a couple weeks ago also, but apparently the Lord wanted us to hear it again because yeah. it was already in my notes. <laughs> I was like, Zach, hey, you took one of my scriptures, but that's okay. We'll go back. <laughs> so let's start in verse 38. And it says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while, while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So we need to start being like Mary again instead of Martha and get back to sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to what he has to say. Amen. When the king is in the room, we listen. He receives our full attention. Have we lost sight of the king being in the room, when royalty is in the room. Every time we walk through these doors, every time a service is opened up, the king is in the room. He lives inside of us, right? And where two or three are gathered together, there he is in the midst of them. So when we come together, the king is in the room. He deserves our full attention. He deserves every part that we have to give to him. He deserves us sitting at his feet, forgetting our schedules, forgetting what we forgot to do, right? And being worried about it and not being able to concentrate on the word that pastor's preaching or not being able to get into worship because we're thinking about our crazy schedule the next week or what's coming up or what you're going through right now. But when the king is in the room, he deserves our full attention, no matter what else is going on. Because there's going to be times in our lives where we have plenty of reasons to be distracted. We might be going through a storm. We might be going through a really tough time. And during those moments, it can be harder to not, you know, to give God our focus, our complete focus. But even then, if we would just focus on him when the king is in the room and give him our full attention, our full adoration, all of the worship we have, all the praise that we have to give, he's going to fill us up and give us exactly what we need in that moment. He's going to help us get to the next day and the next day and the next day. So let's go to Psalm 27, verse 4. 
I love the book of Psalms. I tend to live in the book of Psalms. Psalm 27, verse 4. And I'm reading out of the NLT tonight. Um, I started in the New King James, but now we're going to be in the NLT for the rest of the night. And this verse says, The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. So the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in his house, to dwell with him. You know, you don't know what you have sometimes until you don't have it anymore, right? And I remember during um, the whole church shutdown and COVID and all of that, uh, I remember I needed to come and clean the church before it closed its doors for a, a little while. I don't remember how long we were closed. It, was, it felt like forever. But, um, and I remember coming to clean the church, and I had Eden with me. And I just remember thinking, you know, we don't know when we're going to be back in this house. So let's just take a minute and come to the altar before we get cleaning. And I came to the altar with Eden, and we just knelt here. I don't, I haven't told anybody this, but <laughs> we just knelt here in his presence at the altar, just praying to him and thanking him for everything he is, who he is, because this place has history in it. Yeah, we are the church, but this place where we gather and fellowship together, there are so many tears that have been cried at this altar there are so many miracles that have, that have taken place at this altar. There are so many people whose lives have been touched and changed at this altar. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And we should never lose, lose our love for our church, for the things of God, for Jesus himself. Never get used to this house. Never get used to coming together and fellowshipping but counting it all joy, amen? We get to be in the presence of the king. We get to be in the presence of our maker. We get to come together and worship him as one body, as one sound, as one voice, one heartbeat towards God. What an amazing gift, amen? We, get, we should never lose sight of the gift that we have, our church, of the gift that we have, our relationship with Jesus Christ. That was, that was a tough time. It was, I think all of us realized, wow, you know, I think we have taken the house of God for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we're honest with ourselves, like we just get used to it being here and the doors being open. Yeah. Yeah. So when they closed, it was like, whoa, you know, yeah. I can't take this for granted. I can't take it for granted. Every time we get to come in here is a gift. All right, let's go to Psalm 119, verse 10. Psalm 119, verse 10. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, I'm, I want to uh, read verse 11. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So coming back to our first love, we got to start falling in love with his word again. Amen. We got to hide his word in our heart so that we don't sin against him. But not only that, when we when we hide his word in our heart, when we read his word, when we dive into it, it renews our mind. It causes us to think more like God. We can, well, he'll help us to fall in love with his word again if we allow him to. If we just take the time to dig deep into the word of God, 
to lay aside distraction after distraction after distraction and say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in my word today. I'm going to dive into the scriptures. I ask you, Lord, to help me understand them, to open my eyes to your truths. And he's going to show you something brand new, and it's going to be exactly what you need for that moment. The word is living. It's active. It's alive. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. So the word is a powerful tool that we must fall in love with again if we've lost our love for the word of God. I want to give us four ways to check our love level tonight. So number one, are we doing the first thing still? That's an easy way. Are we going back to our first works? And if we, and if we go back to Revelation chapter 2 in verse 4, I'm just going to read that one more time to us. Revelation 2 verse 4. It says, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look at how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. And we'll stop right there. That was the NLT version. But we must, we must look at our lives and check our love level. Am I still reading my word? Am I still excited to open the book? Am I still longing to be in the prayer closet with the Lord? Am I still excited that it's Sunday morning and I get to go to the house of my God? We got we to gotta check ourselves, check our heart. Am I, am I being obedient to the word of God? Because the Lord says, if you love him, you'll obey his word, right? Right? So that's proof that if we're being obedient to God, that we love him, right? Am I doing these things? Am I praising God, not just at church, but in my own time? And I, am I living a life of worship to God? Am I going back to the things I did at first? Am I still doing those things? Or have I gotten so caught up in my life, in the assignments, in ministry, that I've forgotten about the first things that I used to do. You know, um, being in ministry this long, and uh, Delbert and I, we started in nursery. And uh, it was, we started help, helping in nursery. Yeah, we started helping in nursery first. And I just thought, wow, okay. I can't believe I'm even helping in nursery, but okay. And we started helping with the kids. And then we were um, faithful in that. And then we were actually asked to be um, the leader, team leaders of the superheroes class. Um, and that was like, whoa, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do that, Jesus. We need your help because <laughs> we, we don't know how to do this, but you do. So, <laughs> and the Lord actually gave us a heart for all those, all those kids back there. Man, how, how much fun have we had through the years serving in superheroes. And um, we've been on the worship team for a long time, um, 20 years. He's 21 years probably or more. I don't know. He's a long time. And... Um, and we've just, you know, been faithful with what we've had. And with that, promotion has come. We haven't looked for promotion. We haven't asked for promotion. We haven't even wanted promotion. <laughs> but when you're faithful with little, you are given more. And that, all that to say, now that we're running, my husband and I are running in ministry. We're running now. And we haven't stopped running. Once we started running, we haven't stopped running. I have to check myself all the time. I check myself probably every day. Am I putting God first? Because there can be days where I get so caught up in the doing, just like Martha. I'm like, okay, well, I want to do an awesome job for Jesus. I want to please the Lord, and I want to do it well. So I'm just going to do all the things that I need to do and I have to make sure that I don't forget about the most important thing, though, which is sitting at the feet of Jesus 
and having a true relationship with him and talking with him on a daily basis. So we can't forget the first works, amen? We gotta check ourselves. Number two, do our hearts still burn within us for the things of God? Or have our callings and assignments become a duty? Let's go to Luke 24, verse 32. Luke 24, verse 32. Because when we lose the relationship, if we lose sight of the relationship with Jesus, our ministry assignments are going to start to feel like duties instead of something we're privileged and honored to get to do in the kingdom of God. If I can get there. Luke. I found Luke. Everything disappears when you're up here. Luke 24. <laughs> like, I know that verse was there earlier. <laughs> okay, so this was really cool, just to give a backstory. This is after Jesus was resurrected, and he was beginning to appear to some of his disciples. And um, he was actually walking with these disciples, and they didn't even know it was Jesus. And then in verse 32, they said, it says, they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with, with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? So do our hearts still burn within us for the things of God? Do we still have a burning desire to accomplish the things that God has called us to do? Do we have a burning desire still to come and sit at his feet and listen to the word preached up here? Do we have a burning desire still to go reach the lost? Do we have a burning desire in our hearts for the things of God? Or has everything started feeling like a duty? Oh, it's Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday. I worked all day. Most people have worked. I did not work today. I worked in the house with my kids. But my husband works all day on a Wednesday. Maybe, maybe you're tired, right, when you come in these doors. Maybe it was a tough day. Seems to happen right before, you know, you need to be in the house of God. Things just tend to happen. But do we still have the fire inside of us to say, all right, it might have been a tough day, but I know where the answer is, and I know where I can get filled up, and I know that if I just make it through the doors, Jesus is going to be there and it's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. So we can't lose that fire within us for the things of God, that burning fire. Man, you know, when, somebody, when I hear somebody start to talk about worship, my ear immediately goes, oh, they're talking about worship. And I literally get this fire in my belly. Oh, my gosh, worship. I love worship. All right, let's talk about worship. Let's do this. And... I've, you know, I never want to lose that. I never want to lose that fire. Oh, man, somebody's talking about Jesus right now? I am in. They're talking about a miracle that what just took place? Oh, my gosh. They're talking about how they laid hands on their coworker and that person accepted Jesus? Oh, man, I want to listen to this, right? I want to be a part of this. We never want to lose that excitement, that fire inside of us for the things of God. All right. Number three, are we putting God first or have we settled for idols? Idols don't have to be bad things. Idols can be hobbies, ministry, busyness, even family or friends. Anything we put before God is an idol. So let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. We serve a jealous God. He likes to be our first, our first love. Exodus 20, verse 3, and we're going to read to verse, probably around verse 6. It says, you must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins 
of the parents upon their children, the entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. So anything we put before God is an idol. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people in America today, their idol is sitting right next, on, right next to them on their nightstand at night. Their idol is walking around with them in their pocket, their back pocket. Their idol is riding around with them in the car, and it's called a phone, right? A smartphone. So these smartphones came along. They're not, they're not that smart, actually. But these smartphones came along, and now we have a whole world of distractions in the palm of our hand. This can be addicting. You have social media on here, right? You have um, YouTube, anything that maybe you like to watch shows on your phone. Yeah, shopping. <laughs> Cindy said shopping. Yeah, I love to shop. So, <laughs> but anything we put before God is an idol. Now, is this phone bad by itself? No. no. It's a tool, right? You can use it as a tool, correct? But if we put it before God, anything before God, but I'm just picking on the phone right now. We might as well pick on what's obvious, right? So, yeah, we might as well pick on it. If we put anything before God, it's an idol. So if the first thing that we think about in the morning is to grab our phone and look on social media and what everybody else is doing in their lives. Is there something wrong there? Yes, there is something wrong there. Because what we should think about pursuing first thing in the morning is, Lord, I'm diving into your word because I need to know what you want me to do with my day today. I need that fresh manna from heaven, amen? So, Anything we put before God is an idol. we got to check ourselves. We're checking our love level, right? right. Yep. So what's our love level? Is, are we more concerned about checking our phone throughout the whole day instead of checking the word of God or just talking with Jesus throughout the day? Are we more willing to be distracted by what's on here instead of just putting it all away in another room even and just spending 10 minutes with the Lord? without someone texting us or calling us or emailing us or wonder what this person is doing on social media today, right? Jesus is so much more worth it. He's so much more worth it than this. That's for sure. On the day of judgment, on the day that we meet Jesus face to face, I don't want him to say, oh, you know, your first love became your phone. Uh, You lost me. But, man, you sure did do a lot of works in ministry without me, right? I don't ever want to hear that. I want to hear, well done. I want to hear, man, you were faithful. You were a good servant. Well done. Welcome into heaven. Welcome into my kingdom, amen? Welcome into my presence. All right, our last point is number four. Do we truly love others? Because we will be known for our love for each other. So that's a great way to check our love level toward God. All right, let's go to Mark 12, 29. I'm usually in superheroes on Wednesdays, so I kind of wanted to say Matthew, Mark, Luke. (laughs) Is it in the New Testament or the Old Testament, everyone? (laughs) Does it help? Okay, it's in the New Testament. (laughs) Mark chapter 12, almost there, all right, verse 29, all right, praise God. All right, so red letters again, Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So the Lord is saying, yes, 
You must love the Lord your God with every part of you. But there is something that is as equally as important as loving the Lord your God with everything, and that's loving your neighbor as yourself. So the Lord takes that really seriously then, if he's making it equal to the commandment of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. We must walk in love with each other. So in Matthew in Matthew, we don't need to turn there, but in Matthew 5, 43, it talks about loving your enemies, doing good to those that, praying for those that hurt you, right? The Lord's idea, like his, his um, thinking, I'm trying to think of the right word, his thinking of love is so much different than the world's because the Lord is saying, hey, love your enemy, pray for those that hurt you. That's the kind of love we need to show other people. We, we need to be praying for other people, amen? You know, Jesus pleaded in prayer for others. He pleaded in prayer for Peter not to, not to lose his faith when he denied him three times. It says in the word that he pleaded in prayer for him. When was the last time that we were so serious about praying for someone that we pleaded in prayer for them? We took it so seriously that we were like, Lord, I, I have to stop everything. I need to plead in prayer for this person so that they wouldn't lose their faith, but that they could make it through this hard time. We got to love people that much, that we're willing, for, we're willing to change our schedule for them. We're willing to do things that maybe we don't want to do for them, amen, to pray for them and we don't feel like praying for them because maybe you don't even like them that much. <laughs> But the Lord has called us to love. You know, there's going to be a time in our lives that we will have to dig deep from the well of our relationship with Jesus in order to not be shaken in this world. That's the time where, like Pastor says, you don't want a cistern with a hole in it. You want a well, a well of a relationship that you've dug day after day after day after day. And it needs to be deep. Because when life shakes you and tries to shake you, you got to be able to run to that well, that relationship with Jesus that you've built day after day, time after time. You know, I've had a lot of things try to shake me before in this life. Um, I've had a miscarriage that tried to sh shake me. Uh, my dad had brain surgery. You know, th those were tough times. Um, and then I had my brother's accident also where he, he actually died on the table multiple times. And I just want to, I want to go back to that day for a moment because I remember it trying to shake my faith because my brother wasn't serving God at the time. And he, he got into this really bad car accident, if you don't know the story, and he was, he was in ICU, and they didn't know if he was going to make it. And I remember we were in the waiting room, and they were going to let all of us go one, one by one to go say our possible goodbyes to him, um, to see him one more time and while he was in induced coma. And I remember I went into the bathroom while we were waiting, and I looked in the mirror, and all of these fiery darts just started to come at me one by one, like demonic, nasty, fiery darts. I've, I've never even thought of these kinds of things. But, and the enemy was just asking me, hey, what are you going to think of your God if your brother doesn't make it and he dies and he goes to hell? What are you going to think of your God that you've served all your days? What are you going to do? And I remember standing there, and it tried to shake me. It tried to shake my faith. But what the enemy forgot was that I have this well, and it's a deep well. 
And it's a well that I have gone to day after day after day, time after time after time, even when I didn't feel like it, even when I didn't want to, even when I would have rather been doing something else, even when I, was, I could have been distracted, even when I had to close the door to everyone else and just go to that well of a relationship with Jesus. He didn't realize that I had a deep well. And I began to pull out of that well. Wait a minute. My God came through for me this time. My God came through for me that time. I saw that miracle that he did. I remember when he healed my heart from that miscarriage and he gave us the miracle of a son. I remember when he healed my dad of that brain tumor. I remember. I remember when he healed my marriage and he softened my husband's heart. I remember this is my God. I have a well that goes deep and my brother will live and not die in the name of Jesus and he will live to declare the works of the Lord. And after that moment, I went in and I saw my brother and I just grabbed his hand and I told him, hey, you're going to live. You're not going to die. He couldn't hear me, but his spirit man could. And I said, you're, you're going to live. You're not going to die. And then I had to walk out because you could only be there for just a moment. And my brother did live and he had miracle after miracle after miracle. But we're going to go through those moments where we have to have that deep well. It can't be a religious cistern. It can't be something that we've just learned to do on a Sunday, that we've just learned to do on a Wednesday. we got to have that deep well that it's our first love, going back to our relationship with Jesus Christ, because truly that is all that matters. When rubber meets the road, religious duties are not going to get you anywhere. There's no power in that. The one that holds the power is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if we call on Jesus, and if we call on him day after day after day, no matter how we feel, no matter what we're going through, and if we believe his word above any circumstance that comes at us, guess what? We're going to be strong. We're going to be conquerors. We're going to be victorious in this world. And we're going to keep being able to do the work that he's called us to do with him by our side every single day. We're going to run the race until we hit the finish line. And the Lord says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. That's all I have for you tonight. Praise God. Amen. Powerful word. That's our God. That's what he does. That's why we're able to stand here today. That's why we're able to do what we do is because we know our Lord and we know that our Jesus is always with us no matter what hard time we go through. Amen. I have a pr prayer card here from Christine.